Okay, so let's start with horizontal distribution of earthquake. So I think na mention ko na rin last time sa PCS1 yung importance ng center of mass and na demonstrate ko rin yun, no? Siguro since kayo rin naman student ko sa PCS1, uh, let me continue the, the file here and nilagyan natin to ng diaphragm. Where's that? Ito. Yan, nilagyan natin ng diaphragm yan, specifications, yeah. Which is uh, consistent dun sa elevation ng bawat floor. So, 4.7 to. Yeah, okay. And I mentioned ko that this command will output the center of mass no, of the building. And I think, napakita ko yun dito. Yan, so floor diaphragm. Yeah. Which is almost the, at the center of the, the plan. No? Plan-wise, no? Okay. Now, uh, next to this is yung center of rigidity. And uh, the importance of that is, oops, is pag na-locate mo yung center of rigidity, so alam, at, at this point, alam na natin center of mass. Pag na-locate mo yung center of rigidity, let's say it turns out somewhere here, so meron kang eccentricity. That eccentricity will induce torsion. Kasi meron kang, your, your earthquake force will act at the center of mass. Okay? So syempre, ang pivot mo is the center of rigidity. So, dito yung concentrated yung force mo, then yung center of rigidity mo, nandito, so iikot yan. And that will induce torsion. And also, that will affect yung distribution ng earthquake force to each column or shear wall, kung meron kang shear wall. Okay? Kasi in cases na, na equal yung column mo, equal yung sizes in all directions, equal yung quantity. Na-explain ko yan, doon sa plates nyo. For example, this is 100 kN. No? After mo makuha yung vertical distribution, mak uh, let's say at, uh, we are considering third floor. No? Itong plan na to, third floor. Na kita, nakuha mo 100 kN ang vertical distribution ng ng ano, ng, ng earthquake at the third floor. So say, how many columns do we have? Plan-wise. One, one, two, three, four. Apat na frame pala, sorry. Apat na frame. Four frames. Yeah? Do, may ano ba? Naglalag ba ako? I think, hindi naman, no? So four frames. So, yung four, yung four frames na yan, that will share the 100 kN. May share sila sa 100 kN. So again, if they are equal in numbers, I think may nagtanong nito, na, and I know na banggit ko na rin to last time, pag equal in numbers sila, 4 frames, equal yung number of columns per frame. So for example, tigta tatlong column per frame. Yan. This, this is one frame, right? This is another frame. This is another frame. This is another frame. No? In north to south direction. So, kung tikta tatlo yan, uh, okay, ano muna, by frame muna tayo, 100 kN. So, therefore, yung stiffness per frame is iisa. Okay? Na, 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 na natin yan, napag-aralan natin yan sa, sa day one pa nga lang, no? nag-solve tayo ng, ng ano, distribution ng base, ng base shear to each uh, column. No? So, ibig sabihin, yung stiffness per frame we can regard it as uh, the same, no? you are, or equal sila lahat. No? So, 100 kN will be simply divided by 4. Kasi apat na frame yan. Eh. Apat yung magre-resist 
ng 100 kilo newton sa north to south direction. Ha? So this will be 25 kilo newton. This will be 25. This will be 25. And then this will be 25. Yan yung tinatawag natin direct shear. Yan, direct shear. Okay? So, merong, bukod sa direct shear, meron pang torsional shear. May torsional shear pa. Okay? And that will uh, depend kung ano ang torsion mo, kung gano'ng kalaki yung torsion mo, which is yun yung isusolve natin. No? Uh, we will have a sample calculation of that manual. No? But again, uh, sa software, automatic na lahat yan. No? Yun yung kinaganda ng software. At least you should know yung manual calculation. Okay, so by direct shear, ganyan. Ganyan yung distribution. So because of torsion, etong tip to 25 na to, mariredistribute. Basically, mariredistribute lang yan. And when we say mariredistribute, Ibig sabihin, yung summation ng shear na yan will still be 100 kN. Mariredistribute mare lang because of the changes no, ng, ng distribution due to that torsion. Okay? Pero in, in summation, 100 kN pa rin yan. Okay? So in the end, baka maging, ito, this will be say 30 kN. Ito, baka maging, 28 kilonewton. So kung tumaas itong itong nasa right, itong nasa left bababa. No? Dagdag bawas lang naman 'yan eh, no? So this could be 23, so this could be 20. Something like that. Kasi check na natin, no? Uh, 30 plus 28 mm, 58 plus 23 73, so this will be 27. So eh, dapat bawasan 'to. So, then natin, this will be, I'll say this is 25 still. So, this will be 27. Something like, a uh, 20. 5, 25 pala. 30, 58, plus 20, plus 5, 63, plus 20, 83. So, this will be 17 pala. Basta, uh, okay. So, 100 kilo nyo. Okay? Okay. Kaya, paano ko ba itong mababali? Control 1. Sorry. View. Isometric. Structure diagrams. Okay. Now, okay, so let's solve muna tayo ng manual procedure. Sige, basahin nyo muna yung problem and pag-aralan nyo. Na.
I'm gumahana pa yung torsion provision. Anyway, sige. So consider a one-story masonry shear wall structure with a rigid roof diaphragm. Although this is a one-story, pero you can treat this as a typical plan view ng, ano, say, third floor or fourth floor. Okay? And kaya shear wall yung example kasi uh, sila yung nagdidictate ng ano, eh, location ng center of rigidity. Pag, pag meron kang sa model mo, pag may nilagyan mo na isang shear wall yan, automatic yung center of rigidity mo will lean towards dun sa shear wall. Pero in this case na walang shear wall, uh, purely, uh, same concept pa rin, no? pero talagang mas marami ka i-consider. No? Same concept lang naman. No? Kasi it's all it all depends sa rigidity. So ano, ano nga ba ang sukatan ng rigidity or stiffness? The inertia. No? Uh, nabagit na natin yan. No? The inertia will dictate no okay okay so for example ito yung center of mass so andun yung center of rigidity so again may torsion ka and uh, by the drawing ko ito pa na drawing na so kung ito yung force mo Ito yung center of rigidity mo. Ito nga yung torsion mo. Anong direction yan? Counter clockwise. No? So, syempre, ang, ang, for equilibrium, ang, ang resistance ng structure mo is clockwise. Counter clockwise yung force. So, ang tendency ng mga elements mo will resist pointing clockwise for equilibrium. So, para makaform ka ng clockwise force, yung magiging direction na mga forces sa walls mo will be something like this. Right? That is a clockwise resistance from a counterclockwise torsion. Okay? So basically, ganyan lang. Ganyan yung path, no? Force, uh, force direction ng mga uh, resistance mo sa walls. Okay. So, ganun lang. Yung, uh, so, east, west, north, and south respectively. Now, let's proceed with an actual problem. So, the plan view of a masonry shear wall with a rigid roof diaphragm is shown. The relative rigidity of each shear wall, center of mass, uh, center of rigidity, and base shear for the north to south direction are given in the illustration. What is the lateral force in the north wall due to torsion? Ito yung north wall mo. So, tingnan nyo ha. Tingnan nyo muna. No? So, may kita nyo, may kanya-kanyang rigidity yung bawat walls. So, north wall 6, east wall 3, south wall 4, uh, west wall 3. So, most likely, nakaroon sila ng mga discrepancy sa rigidity because of the inertia. Uh, ano ano nagdidictate na inertia? It could be the uh, it turns out same sila ng, ng uh, what they call this, ng length. Or I mean, uh, ito, for example, north and south wall. Same sila ng length, pero iba sila ng rigidity. So, ano possible difference ng dalawa? It could be the, the width. No? Possible, yung width. Or yung thickness ng wall. Okay?
So ang pansin niyo no, ang ginawa lang naman is tinabulate lang naman, no? Yung yung mga rigidity. For example, so wall uh, north, south, east, west, RX ng north and south 6 and 4 which is obvious naman as a problem. So y is 3 and 3. Okay? And 3 3. Wait lang. Share my. Ay, wala pa lang ako yung lang yung background. Okay. Ah, uh, listen. May may discrepancy ito yung presentation niya dun sa plates niyo. Pero if you If you do the same process, then you mess up plates, you lecture, you video doon, you will come up with the same result. No, that's the idea. No, iba lang yung presentation niya ng formula, uh, ng, ng tabulation, yung pala, yung tabulation. No, pero you should come up with the same result. No, so focus tayo dun sa ano. No? Okay, next is, kasi doon, remember doon sa plates nyo. Ano ba yun? KJ, no? KJ prime, KJ double prime. Yun yung nandun, no? yung stabilization nyo. Dito medyo mas simple. No? Okay. Bakit nasa north and south si, I mean, nas, yung rigidity ng north and south nasa Rx. No? Rx. I think uh, na-mention ko na rito before. Uh, why? Because... Kung ito yung yung ito yung shear wall mo. Yan. Nung just a direction na yan, malakas sila sa x direction. Kung meron kang earthquake dito, sila yung magre-resist. No? Kumbaga sila yung first line of defense mo, no? Ngayon, pag meron ka namang earthquake in this direction, ang ang line of defense mo, kumbaga yung masundalo mo ito, itong wall na to. Okay? Right? Ako, lagi kong naalala dito, no? siguro. Kasi I think, karamihan naman sa inyo nakapag-LRT na. No? ba? Ang direction ng LRT, let's say, southbound, go going back Lara. Anong magandang, anong magandang position mo ng katawan mo para pag, pag huminto bigla yung, yung trend, hindi ka matutumba. Siyempre, di ba, yung, 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 yung position ng katawan mo is yung, yung naka-parallel doon sa direction ng, ng train. Di ba? Uh, say, wait lang, ha? Di ba, ito yung LRT. Yan yung train, no? So, ito yung direction niya. Okay? So, this is going baklara. Okay? Going baklara. So, ano yung uh, plan wise no plan wise no nasan ka diyan so yung yung katawan mo is itong ulo mo tapos andito yung shoulder mo di ba ganyan din dapat yung direction mo kasi yung moment of inertia mo no yung yung, stif yung stiffness mo malakas on that direction kasi yung yung inertia force nung nung movement nung trend is going in this direction hindi ka naman tatayo ng pag ganito no let's say nandito ka ito yung ulo mo andito yung katawan mo Weak ka dyan. Tapos ito yung force mo, right? So, weak yung inertia mo dyan. Okay? That's why it's the best position. Ganyan dapat. So, ganun din, no? Ganun din yung concept sa, sa building. So, if, if ito yung earthquake mo, dapat yung position ng wall mo that will resist on that direction is this. Okay? Wah, ba bakit ay lahat yung ano ko? No? Yung... Bakit nila arte yung example ko? Kasi uh, madalas na no, pag may, may, may kasakay kang sadyante, hindi alam yung concept na yun. Na, ano ako, naiirita ako. <laughs> Kasi it's a basic physics concept. No? 
na dapat ganin yung direction mo. Tapos may makikita kang naka 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 ano no, nakatayo on a perpendicular direction. So parang isip mo nag-aral ba 'to ng physics? Diba? So dapat ganun yung direction mo eh. kasi once na SLRT pa naman bigla-bigla humihinto yung trend niyan, no? Yung pag uh, lalo na pag hihinto sa isang station, natapos siksikan kayo, no? Yan, maano ka, ma Pwede ka pang mapilayan diyan, right? Kasi pag siksikan tapos biglang ma maitukod sa likod mo yung ano, yung ng isang katabi mo, yung ano niya, yung, yung force niya dahil nga biglang huminto, masakit noon. Kung naka ano ka, naka mag, yung iba yung orientation ng katawan mo. Yung sinasabi ko nga perpendicular, no? Na which is mahina yung inertia mo doon, yung stiffness mo doon. So the best uh, uh, position is ganito nga. Okay, just, di ba? Uh, that's, that's, that's an application of physics, no? Of, ano, of inertia, no? So, ganun, no? So, kaya ako sinasabi yan because most likely 90% sa inyo nag-LRT. So, dapat ganun, no? Ganun ang, ano, yung position nyo, no? Lalo na sa face-to-face -face, pag pumasok na kayo. Okay? So, kaya nakalatag siya on this direction no sa Okay. Uh, may ano kami, no? may, may, nag-uusap kami sa department kasi lumabas na nga pala yung ano, no? lumabas na pala yung board exam result. So sana kayo ang next in line. <laughs> We're checking yung ano, tinitinan namin yung mga name nung pumasa. Sampo, no? Sampo. Okay, so next is RY. So, syempre, sila yung magre-resist sa uh, east wall, west wall, sa so north to south direction. That's why they are both three, yung rigidity nila. Okay, DX. How do we come up with DX? Excuse me. So 12.2, si East Wall. Ito si East Wall. So given kasi yung location ng center of mass. So ito nga, 12.2. Tapos ang total natin is, dahil nasa half sila, 24.4. So ibig sabihin, this one is 24.4. Okay. So half of 24.4, 12.2. Okay, so DX. Nasa DX sila. Kasi syempre, sila nga yung nagre-resist sa di gantong direction. So ang, ang distance na i-consider mo is this one. DX. Reference natin itong center of rigidity. No? Yan. The location of center of rigidity. How about the west wall? So, ganun din. Nasa, haka, nasa kalahati kasi sila. So, that means wala tayong eccentricity uh, on the east and west direction. May eccentricity ka lang sa north to south. No? Kasi same location yung center of rigidity and center of mass. In terms of x direction. In terms of x direction. How about dy? So, ito naman. North and south wall. Okay, so 3.6 yung north wall kasi ang distance niya sa dulo is 5.5. Eh ano ba yung total height natin? 9.1. 9.1 minus 5.5, 3.6. Okay, positive siya. 
Then itong south wall is 5.5. Negative naman. Kasi nga, ang reference natin, center of rigidity. And that's it. So once na establish mo na yan, compute RD, multiply R and D, tapos RD square, R times D square, and tabulate. Parang ano lang to, no? parang yung do sa vertical distribution of earthquake. Then get the summation. Okay. And apply this formula. So this is the formula for torsional shear. Yan yung torsional shear. Kasi yung direct shear, as I've shown earlier, parang ano lang, no? basically, didivide mo lang sa number no? yung base shear. Didivide mo lang kung ilang frame yung nagre-resist. No? So dito kasi, kinukonsider natin yung rigidity and yung location, yung ano, center of mass and center of rigidity. Sa direct shear, hindi. Eh, no? uh, basically, uh, based lang sa stiffness or rigidity. Okay, then applying this formula, so torsion, what is your torsion? Ito, ayun pala, how do we get the torsion? Simply, the base shear times the eccentricity. So, ang base shear mo ay 222.41 kN. Ang eccentricity natin ay 1.2. Coming from, uh, kasi wala tayong eccentricity sa X. So, ang ginamit lang niya is the accidental, 0 0.05 times 24.4. Wala kasi tayong eccentricity sa X direction. Eh. So, 0 0.05 times 24.4, 1.2. So your eccentricity is 1.2, 222.41 times 1.2 is 266.89. Then plug in natin dito sa formula, torsion is 266.89. Ang question is ano daw yung torsional shear sa north wall? So sa north wall will be, ano yung RD? 21.6. Tapos, yung R, summation ng RD square, 1,091.8. So, 5,280 Newton. Yan yung torsional shear. Torsional shear pa lang yan. And kung direct shear niyan, basically, di ba? If this is 222.41, 222.41, uh, ang magiging direct shear ng west wall is this. Sila lang may magre-resist. Diba? So, since both sila the same ng rigidity, so divide mo lang sa 2. 222.41 divided by 2 is 111. Na? Point something. Point 20, uh, 205. Na? Yan. Yan yung direct shift. Okay? I think na, eh, napakita ko ba? Sige, mamaya papakita ko sa STAAD, ah, yung application, no? yung how the STAAD distributes the lateral force. Ah. Okay. Next problem is, na to, both, ano na to? I think, both direct shear and torsional shear. Okay. Yeah. Okay, titigan nyo muna yung problem.
So, ang base shear naman dito ay 266.9 kN. So, this time may kita nyo, magkaiba na yung location ng center of mass and center of rigidity. So, by direct shear, ito, first computation niya is direct shear. What is the total force in the west wall? So, west wall yung tinatanong. Yun nandito. So, 266.9. So, ito yung dalawang magre-resist niyan. On that direction, so ito yung ating base shear. And itong formula na to, no? alam nyo na to, no? since uh, day one, ginamit na natin to. So ano yung stiffness or rigidity ng west wall? 3. Then total stiffness na, na magre-resist ng earthquake on north to south direction is 3 plus 1. Dalawang wall na magre-resist. Okay? So applying that formula, you have 200.18 kN. So majority ng base shear na punta sa west wall. So ito siya. 200.18. So basically, 3 fourths. No? 75% ng base shear na punta sa west wall. Kasi 3 yung rigidity niya eh. No? 3 times yung rigidity niya compared sa east wall. Okay, so makes sense. Okay, now let's talk about yung torsional na. No? Torsional shear. Kasi nga, uh, ito yung center of mass mo. Ito yung center of rigidity mo. Magkakaroon ko ng torsion on this direction. Okay. Then, So let's find the eccentricity first. 15.2 minus 7.6. You say uh, half is 15.2. Yung location of center of mass. Tapos yung location of center of rigidity mo is 7.6. So yung difference ng dalawa, that's the eccentricity. The natural torsion. Yun yung tinatawag na natural torsion. Naalala nyo sa istahad, di ba? May clinic tayo na factor for natural torsion. Ito yun. No, yung, yung difference ng location, ng center of mass and center of rigidity. Tapos meron pa tayong clinic sa istahad yung accidental torsion, accidental eccentricity. Ito naman yun. The 0 0.05 times 30.4. So, yan yung 5%. Nasabi ni Code, kahit pa symmetrical yung structure mo, naasahan mo pa rin, may konting torsion dyan. Kasi, for example, dinisign mo yung building mo. Uh, di ba? Yung distribution ng masses nyo, di ba? Sa low distribution plan, yung pinakompute kong weight per floor, di ba? Nakakalat yung mass mo doon, di ba? Yung, yung dead load, superimposed dead load, uh, assuming na equal yung distribution. Eh, what if in reality, biglang sinabi ni client, ah, gawin kong storage area to. So, mas mabigat dito. Tapos, 
during the construction or I mean after the construction, uh, dito may tiles, dito wala. Walang tiles dito. So iba na yung distribution ng mass mo dyan. That's it. Yun yung mga accidental torsion na tinatawag. Kasi in reality, hindi naman talaga nangyayari yung, ano mo, yung mismo design criteria mo. May mga ano yan, may mga uh, glitches dyan na hindi na tutupad, no? hindi, hindi, hindi na, na nasasatisfy in real world. So ito yung, I think ito yung ano ni Coke, no? yung reason for that. So that is 5% of the dimension, 30.4, so 1.5 meters. Okay, uh, 7.6 minus 1.5, 6.1. Okay. In this, pro in this problem, so sinubtract niya, no? pero again, siya sabi ko nga, ang earthquake is cyclic. No? So ang earthquake mo, pwedeng magyari dyan, pwedeng mag on this direction, wow, on this direction, and this direction. So, cover na yan ni software. No? So, software na bahala dyan sa inyo. So, in this problem, assume natin na ganito yung distribution. Six point one. So TNS or the torsion is basically base shear times the eccentricity. So two sixty six point nine six point one is one six two eight kilonewton meter. And so, repeating the same process, para makita niyo yung plan. Yan. So, ilatag ulit yung mga rigidity and the distances. So, sa north and south, 3 and 5. Sa east and west, 3 and 1. 1 and 3. And distances ng east and west, 22.8 si east. Wow. Kasi ang ano nito is 30 point ano to eh, di ba? Uh, 30.4. Tapos, i, yung center of rigidity mo is located 7.6. So, unless mo itong dalawa, you will get 22.8. Okay, positive. Then, 7.6 negative. Okay, then sa north to south, 7.6 kasi 12.2, 12.2 minus mo si 4.6. Okay, gets, no? That is 7.6. Then negative 4.6. Okay, so after that, uh, complete lang R times D and then R D square. Ang question is west wall, no? West wall. So summation of R D square is 972.2. And then plug in the formula for the west wall. Torsion is 1628. Ang RD ng west wall ay negative 22.8 and then summation RD square 972.2. We will get negative 38.18. So negative siya. Why? Kasi, di ba, uh, aganto yung torsion mo. So ang magiging resistance ng mga walls mo is clockwise. So ang direction nila is this one, this one, this one, and then this one. Okay, and ang, ang question kasi is west wall. So, makes sense. No neg negative direction siya. And, okay. Now, relate ulit natin yan sa direct shear. Kung ito yung base shear mo, ang direct shear mo is pa ganito. Yan yung resistance ng, ng west wall mo, saka east wall. Now, so ito yung direct shear. Ito naman yung torsional shear. So, makikita mo yung direct shear mo is going downwards, pero yung torsional shear mo 
is going upward. So, nag-negate yung dalawa sa west wall. That's why, pagdating dito, minus sila. So, sa direct shear, 200.18, yung nakuha natin kanina. And then, sa torsional shear, negative 38.18. So, the, to the total shear is 161.995 kilonewton. Okay, so uh, let you absorb that. Okay. Tapos na. I think may isa pa ba example dito? Ito, location lang to ng ano eh. Ng, ng wall. Ito yung vertical distribution. So locating the, the rigid roof diaphragm the relative rigidities of the concrete walls are given determine the location of the center of rigidity. 
in the x and y direction. Ayan, locating lang yung center of rigidity. So ano lang to, no? Barignon's theorem lang naman to, no? essentially. So may kita nyo, iba yung, yung distribution ng rigidity. So 3, 5, 2, 4, 1. So latag mo lang yung mga rigidity per wall. A, B, C, D, E. Uh, rigidity ng A is 5. Rigidity ng B, 4. C is 3. D is 2, E is 1. Then, ano yung X ni A? Okay. Ano natin dito? 7.6. Kasi 15.2 divide 2 is 7.6. So, wala siyang resistance sa uh, Y. Okay? Kasi nga, uh, ang i-resist itong Wall A is on this direction. Wall B. Four. So magre-resist siya on this direction. So anong kanyang Y? 6.1. 12.2 divided by 2 is 6.1. So basically, kukunin nyo lang naman yung Uh, centroid. Okay. Wall C. 3. Uh, centroid niya here. Magre-resist siya ng wall in this direction. Ano yung ano niya? 15.2 Y. Kasi 7.6 plus half ng 15.2 7.6 also. So 15.2. Then ano yung distance niya from here? is 12.2. Wall D. Distance niya from O is half of 12.2, 6.1. And ang distance niya from here, 30. Point, uh, point 0.5. Bakit 30.2? Wall D. Kasi 15. 15.2 plus 15.2, 30.4 30 dapat yun. Siguro ano lang to, uh, ah, kasi nga naka-English units, no? So ano lang yun. Konti lang naman difference. Naka-English kasi kinonvert sa metric, nagkakaroon ng, ano, to, ng discrepancy. Okay. Last wall is E. Ang centroid niya is syempre dahil that is 3 meters uh, 1.5 no 1.5 yung to minus 30.5 is 29 okay yeah so once you do that apply Varignon's theorem x bar is lahat ng ano ano, ano ba tinatanong Location of the center of rigidity. X bar is 4 times 0. Kasi ang magre-resist sa north to south, di ba itong B and D? Itong B and D. So ang rigidity niya ay 4 plus 2. Okay? Tapos, so, 4, ang ng B is times 0. Plus yung D is 2 times 30.5. So plug in mo lang yan. So you will get 10.2. X bar. Kasi ang magre-resist sa north to south is itong dalawa. Then for Y bar, ang magre-resist naman sa east to west is itong C, itong A, saka itong E. C, A, and E. So, latag mo yung mga rigidity nila. C, A, 5. C, C, 3. C, E, 1. So, ano yung mga distances? C, A, 
So C, 12.2, and then CE, 0. Then summation of all the rigidity, 5 plus 3 plus 1, and then compute, 4.1. So yan yung center of rigidity, 10.2 and 4.1. So X bar is 10.2. So that is somewhere here. Then Y bar is 4.1. So somewhere, so ano, uh, one fourth itong 12.2. So bandang baba. So kung ko-correct ko yan, it's somewhere here. Anong banda dito? Yeah, right? How is that? Make sense, no? Kasi may kita nyo, ang pinakamalaking rigidity, itong wall A. So, yung pinakamalaki, 5. So, ang tendency, nung center of rigidity mo, i-attract nyo yan. No? Kasi ito, mga 3 lang, 2, 1, and 4. So, yung pinakamalaki. So, mag attract siya ng center of rigidity by concept of Barignon's theorem. Okay? Sige, uh, let you absorb that. Okay, by the way, baka may question before ako mag-proceed sa stahad. May isa pa bang problem dito? Hindi ko na-discuss to kasi madali lang to eh. Ito na yung ano. Once na na-absorb mo na tong concept nito, okay na yan. Okay, bakit ko pinakita tong drawing na to? Okay, when you do kasi dynamic analysis, okay, Although pang ano na kasi ito, pang master al, no? Pero sige, I can, I'll, I'll try to, uh, kasi sa, sa dynamic analysis, kinukuha mo yung mode ng building, no? Uh, pag sinabi mo mode, yun yung possible vibration niya, shape of vibration. So, in, typically, ang building should vibrate on this direction, on this shape, no? That is mode one. That's mode one. And then, 
Mode 2, yan, ito yung shape na yun. Mode 2. Ah, ganun, no? ganyan. Okay? And then mode 3, uh, syempre, mas, mas kurba, no? mas, mas, uh, mas gumigiling. No? Yan, mas gumigiling. No? Ito isang sway lang, ito gumiling ng isang ganon, ito mas, mas nag, gumiling siya ng ano, paganyan. Okay? So that is mode 3. Mode 3. Actually, uh, para mas ma, 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 ano, ma, 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 makapag-isip kayo ng mas malalim, no? lahat ng body, no, may tinatawag na mode. No? Lahat ng under vibration, no? na, hindi lang building. No? Uh, even beam, may mode yan. No? Hinahanap mo yung mode of vibration ng mga yan. Okay? And uh, nasasolve yan using the differential equation na to. Yung minention natin last time. This one. So essentially, tapos na pala tayo sa static analysis. Kasi na vertical distribution na tayo, nag-horizontal distribution na tayo. Okay? So dynamic na tayo. So, ito yung equation of motion natin. Oops, no bra. Yeah, no, I think na na ano ko to, no? na nadaanan natin to last time because gusto kong ipakita yung concept ng frequency which is the inverse of period no um, with this equation yan mu double dot the cu dot plus ku equals zero. Uh, since dito sa undamped free vibration kinansel muna natin yung cu prime kasi nga undamped wala kang damping no inalis muna natin yung damping so ang natira sa equation is mu double dot plus ku equals zero. Basically, with that, you can solve the different modes of vibration no? for a uh, multi-degree of freedom system. So, so know that, ano, know that yung, yung formula na yan, you can already solve the different vibration. Okay? Pero, siyempre, Kasi itong discussion na to is single degree of freedom system. Pag sinabi mong single degree of freedom system, uh, in-idealize mo yung structure or yung body as na isang mass, single eh. Single mass, single stiffness. Kaya tinawag na single degree of freedom system. Which is something like this. Parang lollipop. Okay? Lollipop. Nakalump yung mass, nakalump yung Okay. Okay? And uh, may mga na-solve na tayong problem dyan, no? Uh, Siyempre, uh, the period is 2 pi square root of m over k. Now, uh, kasi yung sinasabi kong mode, masasolve mo siya sa multi-degree of freedom system. So, single, pag, pag may, ano ka na, may partner ka na, hindi ka na single. Multi-degree of freedom ka na. No? Hindi ka na single. So, MDOF na yon, Multi-degree of freedom system. Marami na kayo. So, sige. Pa para mas maano nyo. Ma-appreciate na. No? Uh, ito yon, EQ2. So, we will idealize, say, a high-rise building or multi-level building as uh, lamp masses sa bawat floor. No? Ganyan yung pinakano niya. No? Ilalamp mo siya sa bawat floor. So, syempre, may stiffness ka din every floor. No? Every floor. Okay? Yan, no? So, 
Yung kanina, no? MU double dot plus KU equal zero. Eh, since... Yan, so... Yung mass, so kanina, single degree of freedom, single nga, no, isang mass, isang stiffness, walang matrix, hindi siya naka-matrix. So in in reality, no, yung mga multi-level structure, naka-matrix form siya. Okay? So nakita nyo, no? And this is another application of matrix analysis of structure do sa PCS1. Kaya ini-introduce na, ko na siya doon. No? Kasi para may, ano na kayo, may, may, may weapon na kayo, may idea na kayo na, in reality pala, ang mga structure is in matrix form. So, ganun din dito. So, hanggang sa earthquake engineering, hanggang sa dynamic analysis, naka-matrix form sila. Kasi nga, marami ng, ano yun, marami ng degrees of freedom. So, yan. So, that's how you, you compute for the mass matrix, the stiffness matrix. Okay? Naka-diagonal yung mass matrix. So, no worry that. Uh, no worry about that. So, basically, kung alam mo yung mass per floor, ilatag mo lang siya in diagonal, meron ka ng mass matrix. Yung K matrix, no? Uh, basically, ang formula nito is, this is K1 plus K2. So, yung stiffness ng first floor, saka second floor pag a mo. So, dito naman, K2 plus K3. And so on and so forth. Until, uh, and dito, ito yung last floor mo. Say, for example, five-story yan, K5. Then ito, this is simply K2, negative, no? Negative K3, negative K4, negative K5. Okay? Naka-negative one lang kasi naka-normalize siya. Nandito yung kinuha na yung common factor. Okay? And uh, I bet, no? I guess, alam nyo na yung pagkuha ng stiffness, no? Pero when you're talking about earthquake or dynamic analysis ng building, yung K na yan is basically 12 EI over H cube lang to approximate the stiffness. No? Iba yung K na pinag-aralan natin sa PCS1. No? Sa beam, di ba, is 4x4, pag truss, 4x4. Yun naman yung element stiffness matrix. Not talking about uh, lateral. No? Ito kasi lateral yung pinag-uusapan. Okay? Yeah. So, how do we solve that? Hindi uh, pala ito. Ito yung sample problem. Three story. So, yan. Nakalatag yung mass matrix. Then, yan. The stiffness matrix. 12 EI over H cube. Nasolve, nakasolve na tayo ng problem uh, using that formula. And then, ito yung K. And then, yun nga. Since MU... MU double dot plus KU equals zero. Balik tarin mo lang yung ano, parang transpose mo lang yung formula, you will come up with the uh, an eigenvalue problem. So, this is an application of numerical methods, no? Eigenvalue problem, K minus omega square M. So, pagsamahin mo lang yung stiffness matrix sa mass matrix, pero i-multiply mo yung mass matrix to a uh, omega square this is three equations, three unknowns, I think. Yan. So, solvable pa to, no manually, no? by hand. Then you will get omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. And that is omega, that is frequency. Uh, to convert into period, inverse of that, 2 pi over omega, you will have this period, 0.893. 0 0.319, 0 0.221 seconds. So that is the modal period na tinatawag. So basically, nakita nyo, ang problem doon is three story. So meron kang three periods. No? Three periods. So sa eigenvalue, di ba, ang eigenvalue may corresponding eigenvector. May eigenvector ang eigenvalue. And ang eigenvector is simply the shape. Shape lang siya, hindi siya yung actual displacement no so to get the shape the eigenvector plug in mo yung yung corresponding period no for a certain eigen value so or yung omega nito is 7.036 plug in natin sa equation magiging unknown mo itong the eigenvector 312111 kasi three story so kailangan mo ng tatlong coordinates okay so and 
assume natin na yung yung phi 3 1 is 1 no uh, then you can solve the uh, uh, the other two eigen vector 0 0.8 0 0.45 okay Tingnan niyo no, it's the same concept. No, uh, I mean, uh, pa-plug in mo lang naman 'yun eh. Omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 na nakuha mo, no? So, once you know the the ano, the eigen vector, plug natin eh para lang makita niyo yung application. So, this is third floor or roof level, third floor, second floor. So, omega 3 1 is 1. Okay, ko siya dito. So, that is 1. Omega, sorry. Uh, phi to 1, second floor, 0 0.802. So, this is 1. This is 0 0.802. And then, phi 1, 1, 0.445. Yan. So, plot mo yan. That's it. That's your eigenvector. That the eigenvector dictates the shape, shape lang. No, yung shape no vibration. Okay, for for the second mode. Uh, so let's go. This is another one. No, to normalize lang. No? Purpose lang is to normalize. No? Then two two negative. So nasa kabilang side yon. Then one two is negative one point twenty two. Yeah. So isang ano lang yun, no? Isang Isang beses lang siya nag-cross sa axis na to. So, yung third mode, dalawang beses magko-cross. So, one ulit. Negative 2.25. Then, positive ulit. 1.8. So, mas ano yung giling niya. <laughs> yeah. So, that is the mode 3. Siguro, uh, ano pa, ituloy ko pa konti, no? <laughs> Para lang maano nyo, ma makita nyo lang yung application, no? So, although may mga different mode of vibration ng structure, in, uh, uh, again, shape lang siya, no? It doesn't mean na siya yung mag-govern, okay? So, papakita ko na yung mode 1 ang pinaka-importante, normally, typically, no? So, may kita nyo having this... Uh, Formula, plug in mo lang yan. L and M, get the L and M. So you will basically get the effective mass and uh, nga, effective masses. No? Ibig sabihin nun, anong mass ng structure ang mga excite during mode 1? No? So ito, this shows that um, like that, may kita nyo that Mode 1 has a mass of 1.841. Mas lang yan eh. Ito na natin yung ano, effective weight. Yan. So yung effective weight, 
1,059.72 kips. Yung mode 2, 82 kips lang. Then mode 3, 12 kips lang. Diba? May kita nyo na the mode 1 will basically governs yung, yung shape na ganyan. So that means, siya, when an earthquake comes, siya talaga yung may excite. No? Yung mode 2, although gumiling siya ng pagganon, 82 kips lang. No? Yung, yung, yung may excite sa kanya. Mode 3, yung, yung, ano, yung nag-cross ng dalawang beses, is just 12 kips. So it's not likely to happen. No? Kung baga, mangyari man siya, 12 kips lang yung excite. Eh, during earthquake, so it means that this shows, no? this shows that yung modal participation ng mold 1 is 91%. Siyempre, basically, kunin mo lang yung ratio eh. Kunin mo lang yung ratio nung, nung weight ng mold 1 versus the total weight. 91%, mold 2 is 7%, mold 3 is 1.1%. What does it mean? Anong physical meaning nito? Ibig sabihin, yung structure na nakatayo, hindi yung buong mass no ng may excite during earthquake. It, at least, only 90%. Kita nyo? So, kaya may, may mga nagtatanong, Sir, bakit hindi natin sinama yung mass ng ground floor? Number one, nakaresya sa ground. No? Nakaresya sa ground, kaya ang detail nun, di ba, may isolation. Number two, it's, uh, this will show you that yung buong structure mo, 90% lang yung may excite nun during earthquake. Ibig sabihin, uh, even sa study, mapuprove yan, no? Uh, kaya kaya ano kaya ang ang when i draw the ano, when i draw the, the deformation is something like this ibig sabihin itong portion na to ng column will basically move with the ground no ibig sabihin itong portion na yan kung ilang mga columns yan hindi mo na sinasama yung weight niyan right okay because it's uh, itong superstructure na to basically from mid height of the column all the way up that will basically constitute the 90% of the mass of the structure so itong nasa halfway of the column pwede mo na siyang i-ignore that's the point no pwede mo na siyang i-ignore kasi susunod lang siya sa ground so even the weight ng footing mo diyan sa ilalim pwede mo nang i-ignore yon okay now, so as, a, as an engineer, nagiging discretion na lang natin kung gusto mo siyang isama. Pero it shows that mathematically, no, by the concept of the mode of vibration, only 90% of the mass of your structure will be uh, excited during earthquake. Okay? So yan yung mathematical, you can say mathematical proof of that. Okay? Kaya may kita nyo, no, na, nung, nung sa discussion ng base shear, Tapos ikukumpare ko sa weight na naikna no, nung, nung sa floor diaphragm, may discrepancy. No, may discrepancy because yun nga, nung hindi naman talaga totally 100% ng mass ng structure ang na, nagko-contribute sa, ano, sa, sa, sa weight ng building. Nagiging ano na lang, discretion na lang natin yun, engineer's judgment. No. Siyempre, pag mas malaking mass ang consider mo, mas malaking base shear. Mas malaking base shear ang iaano mo, ang ang ano mo, so mas malaking lateral force ang madidistribute sa sa building mo. Mas malaking lateral force, so tendency, mas, mas magiging conservative yung design mo. Okay? Pero at least, be on the background at least, be conscious na hindi naman talaga 100% ng mass of the structure will be excited during earthquake. Okay, so balik tayo sa differential equation. Yan, siguro ha, mag na tayo. So, okay. Uh, Tuta ko ngayon sa perform analysis ng tayo dito eh, no? Tuesday. So, to add the center of rigidity, so ganito yan, no? Punta kayo sa post analysis commands. Okay. And uh, hindi lang yun, no? even the drift. Okay, the drift. Ito na yung drift. 
Di ba may ano tayo, may problem tayo ng drift before? Hindi ko lang na-demo pa sa staad. Yan, ito, ito, ito. Ay, hindi naman. Hindi naman. Ito, ito, ito. Tignan, mention ko na ito. So, ang delta M natin is 0.7 R delta S. Okay? <clears throat> so, again, bakit binalik yung R? Kasi nga, dun sa base shear natin, we are using a reduced base shear. So, ang ginagamit natin is less than no, dun sa actual na ma-experience ng structure natin. In reality, when the design earthquake comes, Uh, mas malaki pa sa base shear na to ang possible na may resist ng earthquake natin or ng, ng structure natin. So therefore, in determining the maximum inelastic displacement ng building natin, binalik ni code yung R. No? Kasi nga, uh, yung base shear na yan will not uh, yan, yung distribute natin, vertical distribution na yan is not the actual earthquake na may experience ng structure natin during the design earthquake. Ha? Yung design earthquake mismo, yung once every 500 years or 475 years. So, to compute, kasi, so, ang tendency, dahil nga mahina yan, reduced measure yan, yung lateral displacement ng structure natin is delta S lang. No? Kung baga, hindi yan yung uh, what they call this, yung maximum. No? Kaya nga, In computing the maximum, binalik ni code yung R. Kasi niless natin yung base shear due to R. So to get the maximum, i-multiply naman natin siya sa R. Okay? And ibabangga natin yon sa allowable, which is for less than 0.7, 0.025. Okay? So kumpitin natin. 0.7 R delta S is equal to point, dahil point, less than 0.7 tayo, kasi nga low rise lang yan, 0.025 H. So, kumpitin natin yan. This is 8.5, di ba? Walang calculator. So, 0.025 divided by 0.7 divided by 8.5. Okay, I'm getting 0.0042. Yeah. So, yan yung lalagay natin sa staat. H. Okay, that's the allowable drift. Okay? So, ano ba yung sabi niya dito? Okay, uh, this drift may be exceeded when it is demonstrated that the greater drift can be tolerated by both structural elements and non-structural elements that could affect the life safety. There shall be no drift limit in single-story steel frame structure whose primary use is limited to storage uh, factories or workshops. Ibig sabihin, yung concept lang ng drift is for life safety. No? So, kung you perform an advanced analysis na na-prove mo na kaya ng structure yung mas malaking drift limit, so be it. No? Pwede. Baga, ano lang to? Uh, standard procedure lang ni code kung ayaw mo mag-perform ng advanced analysis, susundin mo yan. No? Kung kaya mo naman, may software ka uh, to do non-linear analysis. Basically, when you say advanced analysis, non-linear yun eh. No? Because what we are doing now sa Stahad is, non is, is linear. No? Linear lang tayo. No? Hindi tayo nag-non-linear. Pero may mga software na kaya yun. Okay? So, no, no drift limit sa single story. Kasi kung ang primary use lang naman niya is storage. So, ibig sabihin, walang tao. No? 
So okay lang kumaga na uh, masira man siya dahil wala naman tao doon, no? So may ano yan, may may you can wave the drift limit. So nakita niyo no, yung yung style ni code, no? May engineer's judgment ka lagi, no? So parang sasabihin mo, ala, may ano, uh, delikado, kailangan ma-satisfy ko 'to, no? Uh, so you should also check ano yung purpose ng structure mo, no? Kung kung hindi naman siya lalagyan ng maraming tao, walang walang hazard, no? Pwede mo ano eh, uh, what's the right term? Parang pwede mong ma pwede kang mag-deviate not not deviate kasi may no, may ano naman eh may may exception eh may exception sa code eh, no bisa bin pwede mong uh, i-justify yung design mo no as long as ang 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 design mo uh, ang daily design mo is not uh is not uh will not affect life ano life life uh, pag nangyari ang ano, will not destroy uh or will not mm, will not cause uh, life no of a person no during a certain hazard during a like earthquake parang to exaggerate things parang pag nagdesign ka ng perimeter fence no pag nagdesign ka ng perimeter fence bisan kahit ka na magstaad no simpleng ano lang cantilever concept no kasi it's just a perimeter fence wala naman tao doon madalas no Whereas, pag nag-design ka ng building, may tao doon, may occupant doon. Okay? That's, that's how you approach the design. No? Okay. Yeah. okay, so 0 0.0042, let's do that. So, post analysis. Then define commands. Ito yung story drift. Yan. So, lagay natin yung kapit natin. 0 0.0042. Then add. Okay, what else? Oh, before that, we supposedly tingnan mo yung load list. Yan. Kaya kailangan may load list kayo na ng for drift check. So, ito yun. Load list ko for drift check. Okay. Yes. Uh, meeting ko dapat na una to eh na una dapat to okay okay taka ko na lang iyan taka ko na lang i correct next is define command solid to naman yung center of rigidity sorry diaphragm center of rigidity so yan iko compare natin sa center of mass Add story stiffness. Add yun na rin. What else? Na naman. Close. Then, soft story. I think na kita nyo na yung purpose ng soft story. Floor diaphragm options. You can only ex uh, output that kapag may diaphragm kayo. So, ASCE kasi nga we're following American code. Check sub story, okay. I-correct pa to, ha? Ah. Utilities, command fine. Dapat na sa unahan muna si load disk. Kung baga, uutusan mo si staad na na ano, na i-check niya muna yung load disk, I mean, yung story drift, i-compare niya sa load disk na 2000 which is yung load combination ko for diff ito yun yan yeah. yung load combination for diff okay what else uh, may perform analysis yata na okay so save close Long neck crash pa ito.
Yes, okay, so perform analysis, run. So let's check view output file. Yeah, so again, uh, it's just another to center of mass 11.3, 4.9. Then check natin soft story, pasado, story drift, and pasado naman. Okay. So basically, ang ginagawa sa story drift is uh, kukunin mo yung, di ba, nag-sway na yung building natin. Ganyan. So that is, the, say, delta 1. And because of the diaphragm effect. So ito nga yung delta 2. So ito is delta 3. So i, i ano lang yan. The drift is basically, tika lang yun ito, no? delta 1 minus delta 2 over... Uh, H. Okay. Pumpitin mo yung displacement na to. Pinumpit ni Staan yung displacement na yan. Inilest na yung dalawa. Di-divide dun sa H. Yung floor to floor height. Then dapat hindi nila ma-exceed yung 0 0.0042 na ratio. Okay. And what do you notice? This is basically what? Mode 1. Yung shape na yan. Right? Yan yung mode 1. Okay. Uh, ako as a rule of thumb, no, as you will notice na yung mga low-rise building kasi, uh, kasi stiff eh. Relatively stiff ang low-rise building. So, pag ganyan, so konti lang yung displacement niya. No? Konti lang yung displacement niya. So, such that, pumapasa sa story drift. Sige, I'll show you a mid-rise building na nag-fail sa drift. No? Mamaya, no? So, yan. Then, center of rigidity. Yan. Nakita nyo? Compare mo sa center floor diaphragm na ito, 11.2 and 5.5. Ito, 11.3, almost 5. So, that means that yung ating center of mass and center of rigidity is halos the same sila ng location. No? So, ito, 11.2, 5.5. Yung center of mass natin, uh, 11.3 eh, di ba? Tsaka 4.9. Ano lang naman, 0.6 difference lang. No? Okay? So, that means, I'm pretty sure, yung eccentricity na yan is yung 0 0.05. Accidental eccentricity. Okay? So, this means that, uh, that this is an assurance na walang torsion gaano yung ating structure. Okay? Kasi sabi ko nga, when you do dynamic analysis, kagaya ng pinakita ko kanina, no, yung sa mode 1, mode 2, mode 3, dun palang makikita mo kapag torsion ang nag -over. Kung ang mode shape no, ng, 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 ng structure mo in 3D is nagro-rotate. No? Yung pinakita ko lang kasi ano lang yun, no? uh, 2D lang yun. No? Uh, Siyempre, ang software, kaya na niyang mag-dynamic mag, ano, mag analysis ng, ng 3D. No? But since sa sta sa dito sa sa class natin sa course uh, hindi pa tayo nagda-dynamic analysis because syempre kailangan mo kailangan niyo muna ng basic eh, no? So ito I will show you that you, by looking at the diet center of rigidity and center of mass here so this is another proof na kahit walang dynamic analysis no kahit hindi kayo nagda-dynamic analysis uh walang torsion kayong makikita. So, kahit hindi ka na mag-dynamic analysis, it's already a proof na walang torsion sa, sa, ano, no, sa building mo. What else? Punta naman tayo sa story stiffness. Story stiffness. You notice. So, it's a, it's, this is a comparison ng stiffness ng X and ng Z direction. So, paano ba yung isometric ng ano natin, yung structure natin? Diba? Ito yung x-direction. 
Ito yung Z direction. Ay, sorry, Z. So, what do you notice? Who is stronger? Anong stiffness? The lateral X or the Z? So, you can check that. This is 1.95. This is 1.91. So, mas malaki si X. This is 1.64. This is 1.6 only. Mas malaki si X. 1.5, 1.41. So, consistently, mas malaki yung stiffness sa X direction. Right? So, tama na naman yung ano natin. Yung sinabi ko kanina sa LRT. Di ba? So, kasi yung ano mo, yung yung structure mo is naka ano siya, no? Naka by isometric. What's that? Naka-position siya on this direction. Mas mahaba siya sa sa x direction. So, therefore, ang tendency niya, mas stiffer siya on the x direction. Okay? Now, uh, how about rotation? So, 5.5, 1.28. Uh, kahit hindi nyo na tingnan ito eh. Tingnan nyo na lang yung exponent. Tingnan nyo yung exponent ng rotational stiffness. 6, 7. So, yung sabihin, way too higher yung rotational stiffness ng building compared sa lateral. So, what does it mean? No? So, without doing dynamic analysis, no, it shows that it's likelier na mag-translate na mag, na, na, na mag yung building mo either sa X or sa Z direction than umikot siya during earthquake. Kasi ang lakas ng rotational stiffness niya. So, that's it, no? Without without doing the dynamic analysis, remember, um, in discussion tayo, when do we need to perform dynamic analysis kapag uh, five story and up, no? Uh, or 20 meters in height, no? So here, without doing dynamic analysis, uh, kahit pa sabihin na natin, ano, six story and eight story, it's just for pre preliminary check, no? Na hindi iikot yung building mo. Kasi sobrang taas ng rotational stiffness niya compared sa lateral stiffness. Okay? Okay, yeah. And balik natin doon sa uh, dati kong binabanggit no, na uh, as a structural engineer, kailangan, syempre, you need to prove na hindi umiikot yung building mo. No? Kasi nga, pag ang mode 1 mo is nagro-rotate, delikado yun. No? Uh, mas destructive yun. No? And yun nga yung una mong, uh, yun yung una nating uh, kailangan isatisfy globally no sa performance ng building hindi magdi-drift number 2 hindi iikot no and bakit iikot ang building kung yung center of mass and center of rigidity hindi nag malayo sa isa't isa malaki yung eccentricity such that malaki yung torsion and that, uh, we were able to prove that the center of mass and center of rigidity is nasa iisang location halos such that hindi nag-govern ang torsion may torsion yes pero minimal lang Okay, so that's it. That's how you how you quickly check the, the structure, the model, kung tama, kung, kung delikado yung rotation, kung nag-govern. Sige, uh, quickly I will show you a sample building na nag-fail nag sa drift. Ito. Ito. Uh, Ah, kasi naka-input yung ano ko. Meron pa ba akong hindi dapat ano dito? Okay, na-discuss ko naman na. Soft story, rigidity, stiffness. Yan. So, makikita nyo walang shear wall. No? Uh, and then, this is a mid-rise, eight-story building. Okay, then when I check the utilities, output, story drift. And makikita nyo yung factor niya is 0 0.00336 because, uh, syempre, uh, 
ang period niya is more than 0.7 seconds. Kaya 0.002H yung inequate dyan. Yan. Nakita nyo nag-fail na siya. Okay? Failed na siya. Okay? So, what does it mean? No? Uh, ibig sabihin, mid-rise na siya. 0.7 na yung ano niya, yung yung period niya so nagsisway na siya ng malaki no such that na-violate na niya yung 0.002h ni code no it it just shows that habang tumataas ang building mo no although kaya nung poste mo kaya ng ano iyan okay ipepenalize ka ni code no kaya nga di ba sa design natin you have serviceability you have strength criteria and ang drift is just a serviceability issue. Serviceability lang yan, no? That means, uh, you will realize, no? Na halos ang nag-govern sa design ng mga building ang nagdidictate serviceability. Hindi strength, no? That's one proof, no? Na possible na strength-wise, kaya ng mga, ng mga members, pero because... Uh, in consideration ni code sa life safety, possible kasi at that drift, sa sobrang sway ng building mo, damage na yung wall, yung CHB. So may possible, may, may, may matumbahan ng tao. So ayaw ni code nun. No, kahit pa kaya ng building mo, structurally. So because of that drift limit, uh, plus the concept na ni-reduce ni code yung base share, no? alalahanin nyo, mas malaki pang base share ang may experience ang building natin during the design earthquake so we do not know no mas possible may and um, uh, with that may mga may mga members ka na maghihinging no may maghihinging when we say hinging yung ma, 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 ano ma tawag nito hindi ba ito yung column ito yung connection ng beam yung hinging mawawala ng moment connection niya so magigiba yan mawawala yan mangyayari yan no when the, for the design earthquake alam natin yon no uh, yan yung concept ni code eh. Di bali nang masira yung beam, wag lang yung column. So pag nangyari yun, magdi-drift talaga yung building mo. So, lalaki yung sway mo. No? So, yan. No? Uh, kaya, uh, uh, for this building, you need shear wall. Na you need shear wall, you need a stiff element para maging stiffer yung building such that hindi siya mag-sway ng malaki. And that is this one. Shear wall. Ito, ito yung so close ko muna to. Pakita ko naman yung version na niya na may shear wall. So may shear wall na siya. Okay. May may kita nyo. Equal din yung distribution niya. So hindi, wala rin itong rotation. No? Uh, what do you call this? Uh, yan. Ano yung ano niya? Yung wala siyang uh, hindi na govern ang torsion sa kanya and when you look at the drift limit story drift pasado siya okay so yeah so by just by introducing the wall it stiffens the member so yung period niya bumaba okay Okay naman, mga low rise lang naman yung dinidesign nyo. So, uh, I think, I don't think na kailangan nyo na share what. Pero at least for your, ano, for your understanding, um, lubusin na natin, no? Baka may information overload na kayo. Pero recorded naman, no? At least, at least medyo may aware kayo for a low rise and mid rise. Yung, ano naman, yung concept nyo, going to high rise na rin eh. So, tinan nyo ha, uh, this is a problem with shear wall. Yan, so malaki yung rotational stiffness niya. But, look at the, look at the structure. So, again, ang stiffer sa kanya is the x direction. Obvious naman, no? Plus, uh, yung, 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 yung tawag dito, yung length ng wall na to is 
while itong wall na yan is just 2.5. Okay? Remember, the stiffness is 12 EI over H cube, approximately. No? And we were able to prove that pwede nang ano yun, you know? uh, pag iisa ang, iisa ang height, iisa ang material, naka-cancel out yan such that ang magdidictate ng stiffness is the inertia. And ano ang formula ng inertia? BH cube over 12. Assuming na iisa sila ng B, iisa ng thickness yung wall, therefore, uh, ang inertia ng X is greater than inertia sa Z. Kasi 2.5 lang yung H niya. While this one is 3.75. So basically, pag kinube mo yan, malaki. Okay, same quantity ng shear wall. Apat sila. Ito, apat din sa Z direction. Okay, so that means that uh, when we check here, mas malaki yung stiffness sa X direction compared sa Z direction. 4.8, 3.4, 1, 5, pero 7 to. Ito 6 only. 7, 2, 5, 1. Okay? Now, how about the... Uh, para makita nyo yung difference sa base shear. Sa base shear. Huwag nyo muna pansin itong mga warning kasi yung tayo sa base shear. Where is that? Yan. So, uh, uh, we were able to prove that inertia sa X is greater than inertia sa Z. So, therefore, stiffness sa X is what? Greater than stiffness sa Z. Okay? Directly proportional yan. Now, ano ang formula ng period? 2 pi square root of M over K. Pag mas malaki ang K, lumilit ang period. Diba? So therefore, period ng X is less than period sa Z. Kasi mas malaki yung K niya, yung denominator niya. Let's see. Uh, ginamit niya is 0.5 while sa Z is 0 0.98. Yan, makes sense, no? Mas malaki yung period niya. Kasi nga, mas flexible tayo sa Z direction. Now, anong formula ng base shear? CVI over RTW. So, therefore, mas maliit na period, mas malaking base shear. So, therefore, yung base shear sa X will be greater than base shear sa Z. Let's see. 8189 versus 5807. Kasi mas stiffer ka. Okay? Mas malit denominator, mas lalaki ang base Okay? So, makes sense. Nakita nyo, no? Na in, this, in that situation, magkaiba sila ng base no? Mas malaki ang base uh, kapag mas lumalaki ang stiffness. Okay? So, with that, uh, medyo alam nyo na, no? Alam nyo na yung how to inspect your structure, how to check globally, how to manually check kung may mali, no? Sa ano? Sige. So, yeah. So, do you have questions? Okay, sige. Sige. Fine. Last one, no? Punta tayo sa post-processing uh, check lang natin yung EX, for example. Apply. Okay. Uh, reactions. Reactions. Para ma-eliminate na to. Annotate. Remove all. Close. Okay. Tapos, ipakita ko lang yung support. View, front view, ito. and then isolate, no? view selected objects. 
Now, shift N to display the node numbers. And compare natin yung base shear or reaction sa node 7. Okay? Sa node 7, remember EX yung in-investigate natin. Uh, ang reaction niya is sa X direction is 650. Compared mo sa node 23. 77 lang. Versus 650. Remember, nandito ang shear wall natin. Sa dalawang yan. Sa X direction. So it means that inabsorb ng, ng shear wall yung lateral force. So ganun siya ka importante. Whereas sa node 23 and node 31, 77 lang. 73. Yun mo yung 9048. Ganun din. Almost more than 600 din. Okay. Then finally, for y, ina natin yung y, 4350, negative 4350 yung 7. Whereas node 47, 4358. Basically, almost the same, no? pero this time positive. 4358. So, what does it mean? Kasi earthquake x. Ang tendency yung building mo, magsasway ng pag-ganyan. So, yung pag-sway na niyan, this is under tension, this is under compression. By equilibrium, kung, kung pag-ganyan, eh, sorry, kung pag-ganyan ng tension, so, syempre, ine-negate nito, no? Para magkaroon ng equilibrium. Downward, ito naman, compression, kukontrahin naman ito. Okay? So, make sense, na? No? So, yun yung mga, ano, yun yung mga uh, checking na uh, I suggest na gawin nyo uh, for no, na inistaad nyo yung model. Okay. Um, last one siguro. Uh, moment diagram pala. Moment diagram. Display whole structure. Yeah. Tapos, results. Tapos, shift in. Para mawala yung ano. Erratic kasi itong ano eh. Or easy. Yan. So, nakita nyo. Uh, this is a moment diagram of easy. So, makita nyo. Ito yung earthquake mo. For example, along z direction. Ang laki ng moment diagram. Ha? Sa sa gear deck. Pero itong mga intermediate beam mo, halos wala. Kasi naka-release. Yan yung nangyayari. Actually, kahit hindi nyo i-release yan, you, know, I, uh, you will see na walang masyadong earthquake force, moment value yung mga intermediate pin. Okay? Okay, so do you have questions? So if none, uh, okay. Okay, so I'll wait for your plates, no? For checking, no? So, marami-rami kayong ano, pwede nyo i-check sa, sa structure nyo. 